Rock and roll. Everybody freeze! Somebody move! For the first episode of Things You Didn't Know in 2018, we wanted to do what we do best. Talk about a movie for no other reason than because we want to. And we really want to talk about Johnny Utah, Bodie, and the best meatball sandwiches in town. Utah! Give me two. But we'll get you more than two, Busey. How about seven things you didn't know about Point Break? Probably. 100% pure adrenaline. Other guys snort for it, jab a vein for it, and all you gotta do is jump. Point Break, more than anything else, is about chasing adrenaline. So you can probably guess that some of that carried over behind the scenes. And nobody chased it more than Patrick Swayze. The Swayze, in fact, made skydiving almost compulsory among the cast. He even made Gary Busey jump out of some planes, and Busey's character never gets near the extreme sports in the movie. Of course, production hated all the extracurricular risk-taking and tried to force Swayze to stop. But the suits clearly didn't have a problem with the rest of the movie, which is a segue. For a movie about adrenaline junkies to really work, it was important to have the actors do as many of the stunts and fights as possible. So, stunt coordinator and second unit director Glenn R. Wilder held little fight schools for the actors. The one actor that didn't show up to the first day of fight school, however, was Red Hot Chili Peppers frontman Anthony Kiedis. That would be a waste of time. <laughs> Which is why in this fight scene at the beach, he gets punched out immediately. Pretty clear message from stuntman Glenn. Don't show up to class, you won't do anything cool in the fight scene. <laughs> With everybody feeling the thrill-seeking vibe of the film, even when the cameras weren't rolling, the beach football scene also became a little more of a hazard than it needed to be. It's some early 90s macho stuff for sure, but what you may not know is how much the macho stuff didn't stop between takes. There were weights on set to keep the sleeveless actors jacked for the scene, and wrestling matches would break out between bros when they weren't filming. But that's more of a boom bonus thing. The real thing here is the competitive juices also caused Patrick Swayze, who was a gifted athlete, to take it a bit too far. He actually blew out his knee while filming the football scene. The swelling was so bad, a doctor had to drain it every night just to get Swayze back on set the next morning. By the way, total number of Swayze injuries while skydiving? Zero. But now you're saying, hey, isn't blowing out your knee playing football more of a Johnny Utah thing? A knee again, huh? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hey, Angie. What? Here's your guy. What? Patrick Swayze was originally offered the role of Johnny Utah. <laughs> I know, man, isn't it wild? And if you're having trouble picturing Patrick Swayze as anybody but Bodie, you're not alone. Swayze himself said he'd only play the guru surfer. And if you're having trouble picturing anybody besides Keanu Reeves as Johnny Utah, director Catherine Bigelow agrees with you. She was determined to cast Keanu in the role. Charlie Sheen, Johnny Depp, and even Matthew Broderick were also considered for the lead role of Johnny Utah. But that was before Catherine Bigelow even came onto the movie. Before James Cameron and Catherine Bigelow were attached to Point Break, none other than Ridley Scott had a shot to make it. Point Break started out as an idea co-producer Rick King had while walking on the beach. Wouldn't it be cool if an FBI agent went undercover as a surfer? That's it. None of that La La Land magical industry bullshit. King took it to writer W. Peter Eiliff, who was actually waiting tables at the time, to turn the nugget of an idea into a movie. For a few months, Eiliff wrote the screenplay while still waiting tables, and after three drafts, Columbia Pictures bought the script for Ridley Scott. Actually, you know what? That really is some La La Land shit. At least until you get to the part where production got shut down out of nowhere. They'd even been building sets for five months, so it was back to waiting tables for another four years for Eilif before Point Break got a second chance. By the time they did get around to filming, Eilif's script featured a few conversations that happened mid-skydive, including this one in the climax of the film. Pull the cord now! Now you pull it! But turns out talking to each other while hurtling towards the Earth is actually kind of impossible. Skydivers reach speeds of around 120 miles per hour during their jumps, so even shout talking like they do here is out of the question. To film these scenes, the production built a rig with individual cranes for the actors and the cameramen. The rig was set on top of a fan to simulate the wind, and Bob's your movie magic uncle, we're talking and skydiving at the same time. And honestly, it had me fooled. But that's why I'm just a dumb voice in a booth. Let's end in the same place the movie does, Waimea Bay. The 50-year wave that takes out Bodhi was filmed in one of Hawaii's most famous surf destinations, but they actually got crazy lucky. 
At the time, the surf at Waimea hadn't broken like this in over two years, and was close to being the mythic waves that Bodie had been chasing. For Derek Dorner, the big wave surfing pioneer who doubled for Swayze, it was probably a pretty cool gig, except for the fact he was hired specifically to wipe out in some of the biggest surf in the world. That part probably sucked. Adios, amigo! That's it for today, but hit the thumbs up if you liked this episode about a law enforcement agent going undercover in an extreme sports world to root out some criminals, a story that's impossible to do twice. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to Cinefix for more truish things about movies and sometimes 90s macho stuff right here on Things You Didn't Know.